Welcome to the show. In this video we're going to be addressing the biggest frustration with 3D printing in ABS and that of course is bed adhesion. Now if you've printed with ABS in the past I'm sure you've struggled with this. Uh, I certainly have. So in this video I'm going to share my current techniques as well as we're going to do some testing in this video to see if we can dial it in to uh, more or less eliminate this problem. Now I don't expect this to be the only video that I make on the subject. Um, this will be a starting point. I'm going to rely on feedback from you guys and your techniques and then we'll make follow up videos on those uh, methods as well. In this video we're going to set a benchmark um, so that we have something to compare to. Now thanks to having the Ender 3 version 2, I am not uh, embarrassed to show off my 3D printer anymore. So I'll be making a few of these types of videos. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure that you do. And if you have uh, things you'd like to see tested in future videos, make sure you put them in the comments section and uh, we'll have a discussion about those to see whether it's something worth testing. Let's get to it. For our testing, we have two simple shapes. They're fairly long. We have uh, five wall layers. They taper outward as they go up. So they should be fairly prone to warpage and pulling away from the build plate. We have square corners versus round corners as well. We should see a little bit of variation in that test also. Now this first test is an initial layer speed of 55 mm millimeters per second. Let's go ahead and get this one set up. So we have the printer turned on, but we don't have any uh, preheating going at the moment. I'm going to do a thorough cleaning with alcohol. I've already cleaned the build plate with soap and water. Since the beginning I've been using glue stick and I am still using glue stick, I do find that it works a lot better on a glass build plate rather than to use uh, some sort of tape. I've, in the past I've been using packing tape for example and the glue stick seems to work a lot better on glass for ABS anyway. After every print the build plate should be taken off and cleaned, rinsed with soap and water uh, to get it really nice and clean and ready for the next print. What I was doing in the past was simply taking a wet rag and wiping off the build plate. That would leave some residue of glue stick. I would apply the next layer of glue stick on top of that and the bond just was not as good. I've only ever had success with printing ABS in an enclosure to contain that temperature. These test samples will also be printed in the enclosure as well in the same manner. Without an enclosure I found that the parts were uh, prone to warping. They were also prone to cracking especially if the prints were going on for let's say seven or eight hours. About an hour into the print already you can start to see that some of the areas near the corners are starting to come away from the build plate. The red seems to do a pretty good job of displaying that as opposed to using a black filament. I've allowed the print to completely cool on the build plate and what you'll notice is that it uh, both shrinks and pulls away a little bit more from the build plate and continues to warp. And one of the benefits of printing with ABS is it comes off the build plate because it shrunk uh, really easily and usually if you let it cool all the way you can just simply pop it off. There's a little bit of adhesive residue left over and it's a good indication of where the warping stopped. So on the square corner part it seems to have traveled a little bit further back than the rounded edges. And we'll come back to this a little bit later on. So this is a good example of what I normally do and I always have a little bit of warpage on my ABS parts. Alright so let's jump back into Cura and make one simple change. This is based off of some research that I've done and uh, people claim that the initial layer speed is critical and that you should lower it down to somewhere between 20 or 10 millimeters per second and that's going to make a big difference on the adhesion to the build plate. It's important to get the setup right here so that we have a pretty accurate test comparison and so I go through all the same steps of cleanliness for this particular setup as we did before. As you can see here it's laying down that first layer, that supposedly most important layer, and it is extremely slow, um, but it speeds up after that first layer is complete. Taking a little bit more time to apply that first layer is going to get a little bit better contact with the build plate, so I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, however, at this point uh, with the print done, letting it cool, I'm seeing some areas that look pretty similar to the original print, so let's pop them off and see how they look and we'll do a comparison. Alright, so right off the build plate, they don't really look much like the other test samples, uh, so that gives me some indication of maybe an improvement. But um, that's only visual, we really need to move on to something that's more accurate. 
So here we're prepping the bottom, uh, I should say prepping the top to remove any little high spots from the 3D printer um, because there are kind of, it's a bit of a rough surface on the top and I want to make sure that it sits flat on that uh, surface plate. We'll go ahead and clean the surface plate just to make sure everything is ready to go. And I'm going to throw two tests at this. The first test using the dial indicator. Uh, I think that's going to give a good indication of how much uh, warpage we have on the various parts because the thickness will change um, as you go out towards the ends where the warping was occurring. So this dial indicator is reading in thousandths of an inch. So starting with the 55 millimeter per second rounded corners, the average uh, amount of warpage that we're seeing is 0 0.00575 or uh, that's inches or 0.14 millimeters. For the 20 millimeters per second with the rounded edges we are seeing on average 0 0.005 uh, or 0.12 millimeters. So square corners now 55 millimeter per second we are seeing on average 0 0.0075 inches or 0.19 millimeters. And 20 millimeters per second square edges, we're seeing 0 0.0065 or 0.16 millimeters of deformation or warpage. So with the dial indicator test done, I kind of get the sense that it's not the most accurate test that we could have been doing and that's because those parts may not sit completely flat and they may be slightly warped as well. So um, my thought process here is, you know, in understanding the problem, while that part is printing, it is warping and it's pulling up little by little at the ends. So it's still trying to lay down horizontal lines. What's gonna happen is those ends are gonna be squished down, the filament's gonna be more compressed and it is going to produce a thinner area at each end where the warpage is or on a part that has a lot of warpage in those areas and uh, in the center it'll be more or less uh, dimensionally accurate to what you would expect. So uh, this I think will be a better representation of how much warpage has occurred between each part eliminating the variable of how well it sits on the, the uh, surface plate. Alright with that said we have the 55 millimeter per second square edges um, again, I measured the ends, I'm measuring the center, averaging out the ends differential from the center, and it is 0.11 millimeters different on average. The 20 millimeter per second square edges, 0.11 millimeter on average different. 55 millimeter per second uh, radius edges, we have an average difference of 0.085 millimeters and the 20 millimeter per second radius edges we have on average 0 0.08 millimeters difference. All right with all that testing and that data under our belt I thought it would be wise to go ahead and test it on some real parts that I normally print and I have a good idea of the amount of warpage that I could expect. And um, so I'm trying it on a few different parts and just to see what the result will be. Is it going to be any better or any worse than what I've seen before? And overall the result is, I would say, just slightly better or the same as what I was seeing with the faster speed. I'm not seeing a huge difference at all. I'm trying to eliminate as many variables as I can, of course, printing in the enclosure and so on. but. Um, I'm not too impressed with the result and I think there's probably a better way. One thing I didn't cover earlier was the uh, build plate temperature so that's 98 Celsius that I uh, do the initial layer at and then the temperature drops down to 93 Celsius after that point and I have an initial layer flow of 116 percent to make sure I get that good um, adhesion on that first layer. So if I could get your comments about your best method, what do you use? What's the proven method you use for uh, getting good adhesion for ABS parts? Um, and that will kind of lead me to the next test that we can do and we'll see if we can dial it in even more. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you subscribe and like the video. And thanks for watching everybody. Take care. We'll see you on the next one.